so let's quit the smb client utility so another thing is that we can use the smb client utility in order to go ahead and find out which folders have been shared so in the previous example we basically connected to the first partition or c drive itself now let's actually see that you know what folders the user has shared so for that the initialization is simple let's go ahead and give the ip address and of course we have to give in the username and the work group name right so once again we need to give a password and if you actually notice at this time currently there is no share uh, i mean you know something which the user has shared for by default but we have some of these other ones which are shared by default that is you know wherever you see a dollar after that which actually means it is been shared by the window system itself so what we could probably do is maybe go ahead and try sharing a folder right because i am already into the uh, windows computer so just give me a second here so maybe what we can do is you know we could share this folder right and now let's get back to our interface and try this command once again okay so now if you notice the folder which we had shared is now appearing here and it is basically triple it right so in this way using the smb client utility it is also possible for us to go ahead and find out on which computers what all has been shared so using a combination of smb client nbt scan it is possible for us to first of all find out which computers are existing on the work group what files they are sharing going ahead accessing those files downloading files uploading files doing the whole interaction which is possible right so it is also possible that we can map one of these remote file systems to a local directory and carry out many of the more comfortable and easier operations like you know if we can mount this remote file system onto a directory then we can go ahead and do the file storing modification etc on that remote directory very simply so let's look at how we can do that so let's first go ahead and try and create a directory where we can mount this remote file system so let's say we make a directory called remote system right now let's see how we can mount it so for that we use a utility called smb mount let's mount our c drive directly into this directory so remote file system and of course we have to give the username and the work group name so actually i've messed up an option here i sort of remembered the smb client options it seems that smb mount is going to take the username as a different option so basically you can just give username is equal to okay or a minus o option as we can see here right so let's give the minus o option So confronted with the password screen go ahead feed the password okay one thing which i'd like to point out is whatever we did with nbt scan it is possible for us to do the same with nmb lookup so nmb lookup also has a lot of options but the most simplest one is just to give it the minus a option and then the ip address right and we 
pretty much get the same output we got with the nbd scan command Just give the minus f option to look at it is pretty much the same output right Vivekar, once again the work group has been identified so on and so forth so basically there are a lot of ways of doing the same thing anyway synopsizing this tutorial uh, what we have actually done is found out utilities such as nbt scan and smb client and nmb lookup using which we can go ahead find out whether a windows computer is part of a work group or not if yes what is the work group what is the name of the workstation then if we have access to that workstation then going ahead and you know using the username and password to either log on to the domain and then access these resources and then even download and upload files so this is very useful because using this it is possible to share between windows and linux machines right so you may have a file which is on a windows machine go ahead share it and you can use that on your linux system there are ways using mount and something called smb mount that you can mount these remote file systems locally to a directory i'll leave this as a simple exercise to you so as you can see there is already a very simple initialization of mount using smbfs as the file system type which has been given to you so play around with it and try and mount this remote file system locally so that you can use many of your tools directly with it for example you can mount the system and just use vim to modify files on that system so try it out that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. Thank you.